Ah, uh, yeah. Welcome in. Welcome back to another episode of the Format Podcast. Got a pretty interesting show for you here today. Going to talk about the uh, presumptive, soon to be two time uh, National Football League most valuable player, Lamar Jackson, and uh, his, what's the word we should use? Ignominious flame out in the AFC Championship game yesterday against the clearly best player in the league. Patrick Mahomes. But before we get to that, you know what time it is. If you haven't already and you're here on YouTube, please go ahead, click that subscribe, that like, that notification bell. Make sure you uh, subscribe to the audio version of the podcast. If you only want the audio version and don't want to look at me, I get that too. Um, but uh, make sure you share the podcast. Make sure you give us that uh, that like, that subscribe, that five-star review. Leave a comment. We appreciate all that. It helps us find more sports fans. Helps more sports fans find us. And we're almost there almost there to where we can get these uh live call-in shows started so please make sure you're subscribing make sure you're telling people about it let's take this show to new places for 2024 all right let's get to it so lamar jackson um i mentioned in in the opening that um most people presume that he is going to be uh receiving the mvp award in the national football league for the second time in his short career this year um uh, he has been very, very good. Almost incredible. If you look at his uh, pro football focus grade, his pro football focus grade was 90.4 for the season. Obviously, 99 would be the highest. So an incredible grade um, led his team to a, I want to say what, a 14 and three record over the course of the regular season, home field advantage all the way through the playoffs up until the Super Bowl, but couldn't get it done. And why did I say at the beginning of this, it's time for me to start treating people the same? Okay, so y'all know, if you watch the show, you've been here, I have been getting on Dak Prescott for not being that guy, right? I get on him constantly. I believe he's now two and five in the playoffs. He's got a two and five record. He was second team all pro this year. He does not get it done when you need it most. Well, guess what? Lamar Jackson is the same thing. Now, I will be clear, the main difference between Lamar Jackson and Dak Prescott, even though they both have great regular seasons of play, Lamar Jackson is already a unanimous MVP and he looks like he's going to be a two-time MVP. And what does that mean? Everybody who's got two MVPs or more is in the National Football League Hall of Fame. No one assumes that Dak Prescott is going to be going into the Hall of Fame. If he does, well, we're not talking about that, but no one assumes that Dak Prescott is going into the National Football League Hall of Fame. But when Lamar Jackson secures this second MVP and it would be a major upset if he didn't, he's pretty much going to guarantee himself that slot. But the unfortunate part is, and this is where I have to be objective and I have to, you know, treat everyone the same. Lamar Jackson has been, he is not the same player in the playoffs that he is in the regular season. So I was listening to uh, Unsportsmanlike with uh, Chris Canty, former NFL Super Bowl champion, uh, Michelle Smallman and Evan Cohen this morning um, on uh, ESPN radio. And they had some interesting thoughts on the whole uh, Lamar Jackson thing. Let's go ahead, listen to those, and then uh, we'll come back and we'll get into it. Lamar Jackson is likely going to win his second MVP. When you win a second MVP, you find your way to the Hall of Fame. Those like CC and I specifically that have built this guy up don't look that good today because he didn't back up what we thought he could do yesterday. And Smalls has nailed this the entire time. If we are going to put Lamar on a pedestal, Play like we're putting you on a pedestal. And yesterday, he did not do that. 20 of 37, 272, a touchdown, eight carry, an interception, eight carries, 54 yards, a strip sack fumble, bad decisions, overthrows, didn't look right. His timing was off relative to his throws and his decision-making on when to run. There is no way that anyone could watch this guy play yesterday and think, oh, yeah, that's an MVP-style player. It's not. Derek Jeter with the Yankees was so great for so long because he was the same guy in the regular season as he was in the postseason. Factually, Lamar Jackson is a different player in the postseason, and it's not better. We're just asking him to be the same, and he is worse. If we're going to give Josh Allen smoke for not being able to get it done and beat Patrick Mahomes in the Chiefs, then we need to give Lamar the exact same treatment. I mean, there was one play really yesterday where, at the beginning of the game, when he escaped the defense and was able to have that beautiful touchdown pass where you were like, oh, okay, this is it. This is the moment. This is what we're going to see for the entirety of the game. I, I turned to the people I was watching the game with, and I was like, this is going to be an all-time game. This is going to be a shootout. Because the Chiefs open with that surgical drive to score. Mm -hmm. Lamar responds. It felt like we were getting set up for an all-time type game. And it was anything but. Lamar could 
not find a way to respond to Steve Spagnuolo, that defense and the blitz, as you've pointed out, CC. He was holding onto the ball too long. There were throws that he couldn't make. I, I mean, that play in the fourth quarter when the Ravens were down 17-7 and he threw the ball into triple coverage. Come on, what are we doing here? This is not MVP type play. And I think it's a sign of respect to hold Lamar to a certain standard because of what he's accomplished, but he did not show us that yesterday. No, and, and their plan for the blitz was absolutely awful. They weren't great in the red zone. They were over. And then you talk about Lamar on third down. He was one of six for seven yards. Uh, I mean, that's just abysmal, right? I mean, it took two sacks, too. So I just, I, I, it was terrible in situational football. And then you compound it with the turnovers, right? The strip sack, which ultimately didn't amount to much because you were able to get the turnover on downs on the Kansas City Chiefs. You stopped them on fourth down in the red zone. But still, you take away an opportunity for your offense to put together a drive because you turned the ball over. And then you throw that interception in the end zone. I, I, God knows what he was looking at. Maybe it was Isaiah likely putting his hand up, but under, un, any uncertain terms, Lamar Jackson cannot throw that football. But again, as somebody that has supported Lamar Jackson, I need to be fair in the, the current assessment. When talking about Lamar Jackson, he's an elite regular season performer. He's an elite regular season performer. He's not an elite performer because that would include everything. Patrick Mahomes is an elite performer. He's an all-time great, maybe the greatest performer we've ever seen at that position. Right? There are some guys that you may look at and say, they're great in the play. Nick Foles, great in the playoffs. Unreal. Right? You would not say a great regular season performer. And I'm not equating Nick Foles and Lamar Jackson. Let's be clear on that. But you get what I'm saying. There's a difference. When talking about Lamar Jackson, like Joel Embiid in the NBA, a great regular season performer. But Lamar Jackson in the playoffs is worse than Lamar Jackson in the regular season. If the Baltimore Ravens could sign up for Lamar Jackson in the regular season and apply him to the playoffs, they may be going to the Super Bowl. That's not who he was yesterday. That's not who he's been. He has a losing record in the playoffs. And statistically, he is a worse player in the postseason than he is in the regular season. Now, let's be fair. Historically, across the board, no matter who it is, most people's numbers, except for maybe your Tom Brady's, your Joe Montana's, and possibly your Patrick Mahomes, their numbers uh, dip a little bit in the playoffs. Why? Because you're playing against better teams. You don't have bad teams to pad your stats against. And they also have you know time to really prep and prepare for you. And so um, the, the scouting, the defensive game plans, all that is is to another level. You always hear the, the players talk about there's three different seasons. You have the preseason. Then you have the regular season where it ramps up some more. And then the postseason where it's almost a totally different game in terms of intensity. Why? Because we all know that in the postseason, every game could be your last. That could be it. You're done for the season and you got to start all over again from the bottom of the mountain and try to push that boulder up if you don't get the job done. OK, if you're not the last one standing, you got to start all over again to try to get back there for another shot at it the following season. So um, Lamar Jackson, outstanding player, one of the one of the historically he's going to go down as one of the most special athletes ever to play the quarterback position and if he continues to grow and develop he'll be one of the best quarterbacks of all time however however the winning the winning i talk about it all the time the winning has to be there now um if you go back a while and i think i talked about this a couple shows back remember john elway he is still the barometer by which most quarterbacks coming out of college are measured. And he's one of the greatest quarterbacks ever to play the game. And I've said it many times. I truly believe that if John Elway played the game today, that he would easily be one of the greatest to ever do it. He would be right there with Patrick Mahomes. Everything Mahomes can do, John Elway could do. All the physical tools are there. Coincidentally, they're both baseball and football players. The physical tools are there. The mobility is there. Um, everything is there, right? And I truly believe that if Elway played today, he would be, you know, top of the league in terms of, you know, one, two or three great players. Um, he's got a lot of Josh Allen, that type of player. Um, very similar. So anyway, um, we look at that and we say this is a guy that is Pat Mahomes is just absolutely incredible. And the reason I brought up John Elway is because his first three trips to the Super Bowl, he was easily probably the second best quarterback in the league, right? Um, well, top three, but probably the second best because you had Dan Marino, you had Joe Montana, you had John Elway, not necessarily in that order, but those were the, the three top guys. And John Elway kept getting to the Super Bowl, but he was getting destroyed. I think uh, I think he and the Broncos got beat 55-10 by the 49ers. I think they got beat like 39-20 by the Giants, and they got beat 42-10 uh, to 10 by the then Washington Redskins, who are now the commanders. So he was getting there, but he just could not get it done. Couldn't get over the hump. Now, I think he also played an era and benefited from it where ring culture wasn't everything like it is nowadays. You know, what do you what do you play for? You play to win the championship. And it is a serious knock on you, no matter how great you are, if you never get that done. But at the end of the day, I think it should be a serious knock on you if you never get that done, because that's what you're playing for. Right, Herm? Hello. 
You play to win the game. <laughs> exactly. So um, that's that's what it is and what it should be all about. Now, does that mean you can't still be a great player? Can you still be a Hall of Famer? Absolutely. Jim Kelly of the Buffalo Bills is a Hall of Famer. He went to four straight Super Bowls and lost all four. Quick side note. Do we have any idea how hard it is to go to four straight Super Bowls? Patrick Mahomes has been to four Super Bowls in five years, and he can tell you how hard it is. Um, but yeah, back to uh, Lamar Jackson. So this is a guy that we know is an absolutely incredible player one of the most physically gifted has uh developed a lot in the passing game however as i mentioned he's come playoff time he's not the same guy right come playoff time um his record is now two and four six touchdowns and six interceptions in the playoffs and that's not good his uh uh, passing percentage, I think, goes from in the regular season in his career, 64 and a half percent to what? 57 and a half percent in the playoffs. Again, you're playing better teams. They're really uh, they've really scouted you and they prepared all week just to try and stop you. And, and it's a different level again because you lose and your season's over. That's it. But we we see that clearly he's just not the same guy. Um, you, you watch the game yesterday and it wasn't all his fault. Let me be clear on that. It was not all on uh, Lamar Jackson. We had serious issues with the coaching and the inability to adjust um, by the uh, Baltimore offensive coordinator to what Steve Spagnuolo was doing with the bringing pressure, bring bringing pressure. Excuse me, bringing pressure pressure with the um, with the with the pass rush from the Chiefs. And quick side note: when we talk about the greatest defensive minds in the history of football. We talk about your Buddy Ryans and we talk about your Bill Belichick's, of course. We talk about your Herm Edwards. I think it's starting to be about time that Steve Spagnolo gets into those discussions, Dick LeBeau. But yeah, Steve Spags, he's got to get in those discussions. Why? He's already won three championships as a defensive coordinator and he may win a fourth here. He is an outstanding, outstanding big game defensive coordinator. He gets it done and he doesn't always have the most elite talent to do it with. And so we really got to start including this guy in the discussion when we talk about the all time great defensive minds in the history of the game. Just wanted to throw that out there. But anyway, uh, Lamar Jackson, he's not the only one to blame. So we we saw that we didn't get the adjustments we needed from uh, Baltimore's offensive coaching. Um, they, they weren't able to deal with the pressure that Steve Spags and the Chiefs were bringing. We saw that there was a lack of discipline overall. We saw that with the penalties and the late hits and the we saw the personal fouls and, and these things. And so that is that has to be on John Harbaugh, right? The discipline issues that's got to be on coaching. What does Shannon Sharp say? You're either coaching it or you're allowing it. So it, it's one of the two. And these are things that um, may well have changed the tide of the game. But we also saw Lamar Jackson miss key throws. We saw him look hesitant to take off and run, to use his God-given ability of mobility to make plays on the ground. And I know that he wants to show that he's more of a pocket passer and he has the ability to do that. I know that he wants to make use of the fact that he's got more weapons in the passing game than he's ever had before. But at the same time, when a team is giving you the opportunity to jump out the window on him, you got to jump out and get downfield but it seems like his timing was off he was hesitant to take off and when he took off he took off a, a, a second too late which allowed the kansas city defense to catch up and don't get me wrong he made some some really good uh plays in in the ground game but not nearly the way that he is able to in the way he should have uh given what he is capable of doing so I, it, it it was tough to watch it was tough to watch and now the question starts to be is he that guy is he that guy? If y'all remember, I yelled in this microphone that Dak Prescott is not that guy. It's getting to where I may have to uh, yell, Lamar Jackson is not that guy. Now, this is what I will say. And I brought up John Elway earlier. Remember, he lost uh, uh, he lost, and he lost badly in his first three Super Bowls. However, he kept at it. He kept chipping away. And then he, he won his last two and walked off into the sub sunset. Now, nobody wants a sub 500 record on the biggest stage. However, there is still time. Lamar Jackson is young in the game. There's still time for him to eventually get over that hump. But right now, the way Mahomes is playing, and that's a whole different animal right there. The way he's playing, it looks like he wants to lock up the AFC. This is uh, six years as a starter, and Mahomes has been in the AFC Championship game six times, and he's going to play in his fourth Super Bowl now with a chance to win his third. So 
um it it is crazy but yeah now lamar jackson has to go back to the drawing board he has to get better and don't get me wrong the the baltimore ravens also have to get better they have to continue to surround him with weapons and he's got to put himself in a position they have to put him in a position and he has to do the work to put himself in a position that when these games come about that he plays up to the level to which he is capable he has to play up to the level to which he is capable and so you just think about this and you say can he get it done but i guess we can wonder that but so far the only guy in the afc well so we'll say tom brady early he was able to go and beat pat mahomes in the afc championship and joe burrow was able to beat him but the other elite quarterbacks in the conference tom brady obviously is gone now but the other elite quarterbacks in the conference lamar jackson and josh allen have not been able to get it done so what's it going to take for them to be able to scale mount mahomes that is the outstanding question um what i want to know from you is uh do you think that lamar jackson is ever going to win a championship and what do you think it's going to take for him to do that do you think he's that guy do you think that he's absolved by his uh two mvps the fact is in my estimation <laughs> The fact that he has two MVPs is why we're so harsh on him and grading him the way we are. But um, leave your comments in the comment section. Can't wait to hear from you. Can't wait to get back to you. Uh, I'll be back with you on the next episode. And I'm out. Peace.